It's here guys, the end of the year. And this has been, while not a great year for video games, it's been truly amazing for movies in my opinion. And uh, I've watched over 250 movies. And uh, I've seen almost 50 movies that came out this year. So it's pretty impressive. I think I've never done it before in my life. Uh, it's crazy, it's really crazy. And this is my top 20 favorite movies of the year. What categorizes it as a favorite movie? A movie that had good technical aspects, sure, but mainly that it was enjoyable. The most enjoyable movies that also affected me in one way or another. So, some movies are going to be pretty predictable, others aren't. And before we start, I have to give first honorable mentions to The Witch, which is a great horror movie, uh, just didn't make the cut for the 20 movies. Bloodfather, a great return to form for actor Mel Gibson. Deadpool, which was funny the first time around, still kind of funny the second time. After the third viewing, I started seeing a lot of problems with it, so still a solid movie. Hardcore Henry, incredible action, I loved it, but doesn't belong in a top 20, even in my opinion, so. In a Valley of Violence, absolutely underrated action western dark comedy, it's... go watch it, definitely go watch it. And last, also probably least, High Rise. Uh, I should rewatch this movie, I had mixed feelings about it, but I did love a lot of aspects of it, so check it out at your own risk. And then before we actually start, the top 20 movies that I have not seen are La La Land which will probably be number one of all times if I watch it, it's probably gonna be that, but... Manchester by the Sea, Fences, Moana, Edge of Seventeen, Free Fire, Moonlight, Loving, L, Hell or High Water, and Hunt for the Wilderer People. I have not seen those movies, I'd love to, but I just don't have enough time right now to watch all of them, so... I'm sorry, but let's get started with the top 20. At number 20 is The Neon Demon by Nicholas Winding Refn. I hated, I absolutely hated his last movie, Only God For Gays, but this one was 10 times better, even 50 times better. It was kind of enjoyable, very slow paced, but darkly funny in a couple of moments, uh, pretty disturbing the ending, unexpected, kind of... Uh, Creepy, awesome soundtrack, looks amazing, probably the best looking movie of the year from a purely cinematographic point of view, but other than that it's kind of weak in the story department, uh, probably too long for some people, but I enjoyed watching it, especially because I watched this with a friend at home and we were talking throughout the entire movie, but it was still pretty enjoyable. At number 19 is Stan Cloverfield Lane, a movie that came out of nowhere, no one knew what this was gonna be about, just three people in a side of bunker? Okay, fine, let's watch it. And uh, it's great, absolutely great in the first two acts. It's uh, astonishing. John Goodman gives an excellent performance as the captor of Elizabeth, Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Uh, it's creepy, it's intense, it's PG-13 and it feels like it's a narrated movie. It's solid, very, very solid until the final act. I do not want to spoil it, uh, some people are gonna love it, some are gonna hate it, I'm just in the middle, it left me wanting both more and less at the same time, if it makes sense. Uh, once you see the movie you're gonna understand where I'm coming from, but other than that it's an excellent thriller, up until the ending. <laughs> Damn it. At number 18 is The Accountant, starring Ben Affleck. Uh, I was not expecting to enjoy this movie as much as I did, and I was not expecting this to be kind of a dark comedy. Uh, I was laughing, and the entire audience was laughing throughout the movie. Uh, it's violent, it's funny, it's uh, kind of long, and the third act is underwhelming, unfortunately, but up until that point, I was loving it. Uh, ben Affleck is an autistic accountant who kicks ass and is pretty much a mixture of John Wick and Goodwill Hunting. Go watch it, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. At number 17 is easily the most controversial entry in this list, 31 by Rob Zombie. And before you try to lynch me, 
I do not like Rob Zombie as a director all that much. I've seen most of his movies. They are creepy, they are disturbing, they have white trash characters in them. But 31 was just fun. Like, really fun. I enjoyed every second of it. I didn't hate the characters for once. That's a, that's the first in a Rob Zombie movie. Uh, the action was very shaky camish, but I still found it to be pretty gory. Uh, Fun, very fun, and Richard Brake as Doomhead gives uh, one of the most memorable performances, especially from a villain, in the entire year. And plus, Malcolm McDowell. How can you hate Malcolm McDowell dressed up as a British gentleman? Aristocrat. You can't. You absolutely can't. At number 16 is Green Room by Jeremy Solnier, and it stars, unfortunately, the now dead. Anton Yelchin. And when I heard of his death, I still had to watch this movie. It shook me. Uh, it was so freaking young. It was very young. Uh, but still, Green Room is an excellent way to go out. <laughs> Sounds bad to say it, but... He gives a solid performance in the movie. Patrick Stewart is great as well. This is one of the most violent movies of the year. Uh, it's not for everyone. It's very intense. Uh, the third act, again, kind of undermines the rest of the movie, in my opinion. But overall, it's an excellent thriller, an excellent... I wouldn't call it a gore fest, because it doesn't linger on the gore, but it's still there, it's pretty real and brutal. And seeing this group of this punk rock band trapped inside a green room in a building, surrounded by neo-Nazis... Shit goes down, and it's ugly. Pretty darn ugly. At number 15 is another surprise of the year. Ouija, Origin of Evil. Fuck the original Ouija movie. But damn, Origin of Evil is uh, everything I wanted the original Ouija to be. It's a love letter to 70s and 80s horror movies. It doesn't have jump scares. Most of the scary parts are hidden in the background, which creep you even more, especially because they don't make it too apparent, they don't have a loud noise, so you're like, oh shit, something's gonna startle me. No, it's all in the background, and the story itself can, it's pretty emotional in the end. Great acting, especially by Lulu Wilson. Uh, she's in every horror movie, apparently, as the creepy little girl. She's also gonna be in Annabelle as the creepy little girl, but she is a creepy little girl, so, so great casting, great casting. And number 14 is Another... I think I have a shit ton of thrillers in my list, but still, number 15, 14, is Don't Breathe. Fuck me, that was amazing. I've seen this movie three times now, and... Uh, woo! It's pretty darn good. It's uh, the right mixture of an intense uh, as hell thriller, the right amount of horror elements, uh, with some absurd things in the third act. Woo! A movie where three thieves try to rob a blind man who is a war veteran, you know it's going to be fun. And it's from the same director of the remake of Evil Dead, and while a lot of people dislike it, I personally adore that movie. It has its flaws, sure, like every other movie, but I loved it. And this one is a great sophomore picture, I mean, I can't wait to see what it does next. Hopefully Don't Breathe too where Stephen Lang is gonna surf in California trying to catch Jane Levy. That will be amazing, honestly, it will. It really would. At number 13 is the only animated movie of the list. And it's not Zootopia, because I did not like that movie all that much. It's not bad, it's decent, but it's not Cubo and the Two Strings. Stop motion animation by Laika. It looks perfect. It's a truly stunning and marvelous movie to look at. Great music. Very entertaining story with a deep message that got to me. I cried at the ending. And it goes where most movies don't usually go. It's a pretty unconventional fairy tale set in Japan with samurai beetles, talking monkeys, witches. Uh, Kind of creepy in a couple of sequences, but an excellent, excellent animated movie. And the best one of the year, in my opinion. At number 12 is Captain Fantastic, starring Viggo Mortensen. Viggo Mortensen plays 
This family man who gets out from society, he lives with his six children in the forest, he teaches them everything they need to know to become independent from the rest of this world, from other people, and uh, they uh, read a lot, they are very smart, very intelligent, but once their mother dies, they have to go to her funeral, and they have to get back into society. And it's not pretty. And this is one of those movies that's a dramedy, which I do like. It's a drama with comedic elements. Uh, I do like that this movie could have, this movie could have easily been one of those see living out from society is great, or either see uh, society is amazing. Look what awful things happen if you do what this father is doing. No, it actually shows both the pros and cons of every single aspect of society and going away from society. So I give it a lot of props for that, the acting is great from all the children and Viggo Mortensen gives one of his best performances since Eastern Promises, probably. So great job. At number 11 is the other controversial pick of the list. It's a superhero movie. <laughs> and it's not Captain America Civil War. Uh, I liked it, I didn't love it. Kind of disappointed by it. But a movie that doesn't disappoint me was Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Now, before you, before you put a dislike on it, I know that a lot of people don't like it. I know that a lot of people hate it with a vengeance and with a passion. Uh, I loved it. I saw it in the theaters and I was riveted. I saw the extended cut twice and I loved it. I also saw a fan edit which combined both Man of Steel and Dawn of Justice, and it was just as great. I love it. Uh, I don't know why. I should probably hate it like a lot of our... I'm not ashamed, okay? I'm not ashamed. I like this movie. It was fun. It was enjoyable. It had an interesting story. It wasn't uh, super duper deep as they were making out to be. Uh, a lot of people hate the Martha plot point. I liked it, honestly. It made sense to me. I'm one of those guys, sure, but uh, if you don't like it, that's fine, that's fine, put it in your top 10 worst list, uh, worst movies of the year, that probably means that you haven't seen a lot of bad movies this year if you put it in there, but still, um, I liked it, I liked it a lot. And now we get to the actual great movies of the year, those movies that I have watched more than once, some of them. Movies that are highly enjoyable, movies that have an emotional punch. So let's. There's a loss. It's outside, not a problem. At number 10, we have Train to Busan. Now, this year I discovered Korean cinema, and this is one of the best zombie movies I've seen ever, probably. It has a strong emotional story, it is original because it's set on a train, a train that's. Uh, starting to get infected with this zombie virus that's already destroyed almost all of Korea. So a father, his daughter and other survivors have to try and escape from the zombies. It's enjoyable, it's uh, very fast-paced, very intense. I would also consider this a PG-13 zombie movie, it's not gory, it's not even bloody to be honest, but it's very intense. And boy, the ending got to me. I cried, not gonna lie. I cried my eyes out, uh, it's truly great, truly great movie. At number 9 is The Magnificent Seven. I am a sucker for western movies, and I am also a sucker for good action. The Magnificent Seven is easily the best action western I've ever seen. The entire climax is 30 minutes of a shootout in a town, it's shot beautifully, it's violent as hell, it's intense, there is a high body count, the characters, you actually care about them, and I remember most of their names, Chris Pratt, Denzel Washington, even Ethan Hawke, they all do a fantastic job, Vincent D'Onofrio was hilarious in this movie. It's fun, it's a fun, fun action movie that delivered in a simple story with a good moral compass, with a great soundtrack by the late James Horner, and uh, it's a great action movie, my personal favorite of the year. And at number 8 we have my personal favorite horror movie of the year, which is The Conjuring 2. Just go watch my review, I raved about this movie, uh, 
it's playful. It's a playful horror movie. It's uh, still creepy as hell. Some sequences still get to me. I watched this movie already three times. Um, and probably one of my favorite scenes of the year is Patrick Wilson singing Can't Tell Falling In Love With You by Elvis. And just when he sings the song and then he looks up at Vera Farmiga. Amazing. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. At number seven is one of the last movies that I've added to the list before compelling it, uh, shamefully, because it's Swiss Army Man. Not a lot of people are talking about this movie, it had some type of uh, relevance back in uh, March, June, whatever, I don't remember. Uh, in the first half of the year everyone was talking about it more or less, but then it just kind of fell off the radar. But thankfully it came out on VOD, I watched it, boy, what a great dark comedy, uh, almost a dramedy. Uh, I love the acting, Paul Dano and Daniel Radcliffe are great, I don't want to spoil this movie. Um, the soundtrack is mostly a cappella. Amazing how they incorporated it in the actual plot, like one character starts going pa 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 and he stops talking, but the music just keeps on going, and then another character does something and it mixes the... Oh, mind blown! And. Uh, it's a fun movie with a really solid message about society, our behavior, and it was fun. It was really fun. Uh, I watched this with my family, they hated it, they found it kind of juvenile, depressing, not funny. Uh, seems like I have a twisted sense of humor because I laughed quite a lot of times, I laughed. At number 6, is yet another masterful movie by the Neville Neuve, Arrival. Everyone has talked a lot about Arrival, great sci-fi movie, great emotional story, great acting, great music, great cinematography, great special effects. Let's move on, shall we? Let's move on to number 5, Sing Street. And not a lot of people are talking about Sing Street, which is a shame. This was a joy to watch, uh, I'm a sucker for movies with music about music. And this one, oh boy, it's about a teenage boy who falls in love with a young model and in order to impress her he creates a band and he starts creating songs that are pretty much based on what's popular at the time. And since the movie is set in the 80s we have a lot of Duran Duran and whatnot and ah, the songs are great, it's one of the best soundtracks of the year, it's fun, it's enjoyable. Uh, I have to agree that the second half is kind of different from the more charming and light-hearted first half, but boy, probably one of the most bittersweet and depressing scenes of the whole year to me was Drive It Like You Stole It, the whole musical number. If you watch the movie you're gonna understand why. I was looking at it and I went, this is fun, it's a great musical number, and if you actually think about who's in the musical number and what they're doing, and then you think about the entire story, it's pretty depressing. Still, let's move on! At number 4 we have a movie that probably not a lot of people have seen, I don't know, I think it still has to come out in the uh, USA, whatever, but it's another South Korean movie by one of my personal favorite directors, Kim Ji-Woon, it's The Age of Shadows, and I was fortunate enough to watch it at the Venice Film Festival. Fuck me, it's amazing! It's one of the best movies, espionage, historical dramas that I've ever seen. Uh, it has a 20 minute long sequence on board of a train that's kind of like the pub scene in Inglourious Bastards. I was sweating like hell. It was very intense, you never know who's gonna die. It's a violent movie, it's engaging. And the ending, it's kind of like a Return of the King type of ending, where it just keeps on going, but I still like it because it brings full circle everything, literally first circle. First scene connects to the last scene, masterfully done, and one of the best performances of the year from the main actor, I can't remember the name, but still, great performance. And now we are down to the final three movies of the year. And those are always the movies that I consider to be kind of interchangeable, more or less, depending on the day, depending on how I am feeling. 
but still, let's put them in whatever order. At number 3, we have Hacksaw Ridge. I've already made a review about the movie, as uh, things have not changed since I watched it. Excellent war movie, brutal, with a great story attached, a great acting by a cast that's usually kind of mediocre in other movies. Uh, Mel Gibson gets action and great performances every single time. He is <sighs> great and I'm happy that he's back and I hope he gets an Oscar nomination, just like a way to say, come on Mel, you can do it, you can become a great star again. You truly, truly can. At number two, we have the best comedy of the year, one of the funniest movies in a long time. Every single time I watch it, I still find something new to laugh at. It's the nice guys. Amazing, truly, truly spectacular. Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling are great as this pair of detectives who have to find out how a porno star was murdered and the disappearance of a, a girl that's the daughter of... A... The story is kind of not important, a lot of people criticized it for it, but in a buddy movie, it's mainly about the chemistry between the two bodies, and the movies in the story is just a backdrop for them to play off each other. And Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling have probably the best chemistry of the year. Truly funny, truly dark, and truly, truly fun. One of the most fun, fun movies I've seen. Thank you, Shane Black, for making it. It makes him pissed off that it made almost zero money at the box office compared to, what was it, Zootopia that came out the same week? Fuck me, or Secret Life of Pets. No! It was the Angry Birds movie. It was the fucking Angry Birds movie. <sighs> Still, a solid, solid film. And then, at number one, my personal favorite movie of the year that is not La La Land because I've not watched it, God, mm, is Nocturnal Animals. I've talked endlessly about this movie, uh, it shook me emotionally, I was uh, riveted throughout the entire thing, gorgeously shot, brilliantly acted, a brutal story that's not gory, that's not bloody, but it's still kind of violent, uh, a story within a story, this wife, this woman who reads the manuscript of her ex-husband, and it's a metaphor for their love life. Wow! Wow! Some people are finding it pretentious, some are loving it, some are just going, eh. <laughs> I loved it. I truly loved it. It's my personal favorite movie of the year. But it's great. It's truly, truly great movie. It's not for everyone. Uh, it's only the second movie by Tom Ford, yeah, the fashion designer, after the, uh, the other excellent movie, A Single Man, so I loved it, and it's my personal favorite movie of the year. So guys, do you agree with my list? Do you disagree? And I want to know your favorite picks, and this is just my personal list, it's not the list of the best movies, because there are some movies that I consider to be better than others, like, I can safely say that from a lot of aspects, uh, Captain America Civil War is better than Batman v Superman, but I found more enjoyment from Batman v Superman, and I was more entertained throughout. So that's just personal opinion, but to share your details, your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks, as always, for watching, guys. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in a new video next year. Bye, and happy new year.